It's no secret that the pop punk and emo scene is filled with freaks and weirdos. We've all heard story after story of these like guitar players, of these front people, these singers doing really disgusting things while they're out on tour, okay? But today, I want to bring to attention the one that you probably never heard of, okay? This is a guy that nobody even cares about, but the things that he has done and the things that he's currently doing are awful. This guy that we're talking about actually got caught. This guy that we're talking about actually went to jail for six years and nobody even knows about him. Nobody even talks about him, which is crazy because he was signed to Atlantic Records doing the stuff at the very top level. We're not talking about just some underground guy on the road. No, no, no. We're talking about some guy that was out there on the road with the likes of Slash and the Smashing Pumpkins. This guy actually sang the vocals and he, maybe the whole band was involved in like the performance of an Avengers theme song for a cartoon. The real things were happening for this band and then he just peed it all away, all right? Hey, how's it going? I'm your friendly neighborhood gatekeeper, Dan Frampton, and today we gotta talk about a particularly evil individual. He's done some pretty messed up stuff, so if you wanna bounce out of this one and not hear about all the disgusting things that he did, I totally get it. If you get triggered by like violence and essay and that kind of thing, please, by all means, get away from this video. But for the people that are staying here, we're gonna point and laugh at this GoFundMe over here that, we're, that this guy started after getting out of jail. Now, this story came to me from the Dan Frampton news team, okay? When I'm live here on the channel, oh, that's another thing. If you wanna be a part of the live, all you gotta do is stay right here on the channel, maybe get those notifications going, and then come and enjoy some live streaming, okay? The last couple streams have been a little bit choppy, but the Dan Frampton news team has been hitting us with the hot stories, okay? So this one over here comes from the Dan Frampton news team. Help me record. Welcome to the promised land. Well, who is this guy? This guy, his name is Josh Caddy, okay? And this video that's on his GoFundMe, I think only serves to be on his GoFundMe because the YouTube channel that it's on has one subscriber. This video has like maybe a hundred and some odd views. Nobody cares about this guy anymore, which is insane because he is this guy from this band called Bad City signed to Atlantic Records, okay? This video came out 12 years ago for the song Wildlife, and if you check them out on Twitter, back then, people were like losing their minds over this band. Like, oh, I can't wait to see Josh Caddy perform live. Oh, when's he coming to my town? I hope that he plays this song, blah, 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 blah. You know, he was a front man of an emo band that had the girlies going wild. That was 100% this guy's shtick. Now we will be getting back to the GoFundMe because we need to see this story unfold first before we get to the end of it. This thing will be coming full circle, okay? Here's the Avengers thing that he took part in. Play one or two seconds of that. Okay, so <laughs> we got him going out and doing all sorts of stuff, but then, oh my God, he gets kicked out of his band. And on the on the Wikipedia page, none of this is mentioned, okay? It's just like, oh, Josh, Josh left the band, and it's really hard to find all the details, so you really need to go to the nitty gritty. You need to go to the government websites, okay? Because not even the news outlets are doing this. So I had to go to the Illinois registry, okay, to find this guy. And this is the picture of him right over here, okay? After he was charged with two counts of stuff, criminal essay and can't consent. Those are not amazing things um, to be charged with, okay? Now this goes beyond accusations. This goes beyond any of that. This guy is those things. This guy is in the system for doing these things. This guy is a monster, you know what I mean? And I wanna be able to say, this guy does the crime, he does the rehabilitation, and he comes out. Let's give this guy a second chance. But the reason why this video has this tone is because I've already watched the GoFundMe thing, and I don't believe that this guy is genuine or deserves a second chance. And I don't think the rest of the world does either because he's not really reaching his his uh, fund me goals but then it's like okay great Dan he's just in the registry here criminal essay this is his cute little comb over that he's got going on but like what did he actually do well I had to go find some court documents <laughs> in order to find that because of course this was not a succinct and easy thing to go through all right 
and uh, the court documents are very long. It goes through all the nitty gritty gross details. So if you want to get away from all the gross details, I suggest going away from this video right now because I'm going to read only a couple of the of the parts that I find to be um, pertinent to the story. So you just get the idea of the guy that we're working with here, okay? Because by the time we watch his GoFundMe video, we need to know how we got there, you know? So the first bit of this court document I wanna read is this chunk here, which goes through the events, okay? So if you don't wanna hear these events, like I said a million times, I'm trying to give as many prefaces as possible to people that don't wanna hear this stuff, okay? And I totally, absolutely 100% get it. But this is where it gets a little raunchy. I will be using like censoring techniques to get around some of these words or whatever. So you might not hear the words, but you'll definitely get an idea for what this guy did. And before we get into this, I gotta mention that the woman involved in this, she's remaining anonymous. Uh, she's only gonna be called HM here, okay? Which I think is a great call. It would be awful to have your name attached to this on top of everything going forward. So HM. In May 2011, HM, HM's boyfriend and the defendant were visiting Illinois State University to celebrate a friend's graduation and attend an art show. At some point in the night, HM became very intoxicated and had to be carried to an upstairs bedroom of the apartment where she was staying. HM awoke to the feeling of somebody hitting her she asked who was in the room. The defendant identified himself. She fled the room and informed the boyfriend that the defendant had ripped her. Defendant later admitted to police investigators that he put his fingers into HM's while she was sleeping. What a monster. What an absolute monster. The way this thing is framed is uh, this guy, the defendant as they're calling him, Josh Caddy, was on vacation with the boyfriend of HM and HM. These guys were like a trio, I guess, you know what I mean? So now you're violating the trust of HM's boyfriend, but that doesn't even really matter. That just adds the layer of degeneracy here, you know what I mean? He didn't care about that dynamic, and he didn't care about this person's autonomy. Waiting until they were drunk and passed out to take advantage of them? What a disgusting piece of crap over here. Oh, and you think this is new behavior? No, the court did some digging and found that when he was 14 years old, when he was living in California, he admitted to allegations of juvenile delinquency where he committed lewd and lascivious acts upon his seven-year-old sister. Okay? This dude is evil. This guy shouldn't be able to walk the planet with the rest of us. What is he doing out of jail now doing this GoFundMe? What do you mean he's doing a, a GoFundMe? He wants to be back in the music scene? He thinks that that's okay? Okay, well that emo pop punk thing is done. What's he gonna do? Well, spoiler alert, he wants to do Christian rock. Now given what he did, given the six years that he spent in jail, which I think is not enough, okay? The, the minimum was four years for what he did and the maximum was 15, I think. And because he demonstrated remorse and he admitted to everything along the way, they reduced it down to seven years, but he got out in six, okay? Okay, that's unbelievable <laughs> that that could happen. But even the dude from Headley isn't due in six years. It's wild to put all that into perspective, right? So given all that information, how do you think he should approach this video with maybe a little bit of admission of guilt, maybe a little bit of an apology, maybe like a bit of like a, I'm so sorry I did this thing. Maybe, or is he gonna skirt around it? Let's tune in and find out. Hey, what's up guys? My name is Josh Caddy and I'm looking for support to help me create an 11 song rock and roll worship album called Welcome to the Promised Land. <laughs> 11 song rock and roll worship album called Welcome to the Promised Land. Oh man, when people do like awful bad things in the world, they think going down the road of Jesus Christ is gonna be the way to like, uh, like clean up their image or whatever. Already off to a bad start. My rock and roll journey started back in 2005 when I moved to Texas, met an awesome group of dudes, and we started a band called The Armada. Met an awesome group of dudes. Okay, we can't be playing your, your music here, buddy. That eventually led me to meeting another group of guys in Illinois, and we started a band called Bad City. Oh, here's where Bad City comes into play. We did a lot of really, really cool things. We toured with Slash from Guns N' Roses, The Smashing Pumpkins two times, full nationwide tours nationwide tours these guys were the rock and roll rock and roll rock stars that were just out there living it up all right these guys couldn't be knocked down living at the top of a perch um i got to sing a song for marvel and a, and a commercial for bud light and needless to say i thought i had it all why does he sound like the voiceover for like the wonder years things were going well and that dream was <laughs> <laughs> Oh, grabbing God by the nutsack there. Uh, coming to fruition. 
But with that came a lot of temptation, and I started to drink. A with that came a lot of temptation? Okay, uh, normal people have temptation as well, you know. They don't barge into a passed out person's room and just go to town on them, okay? A lot, and that led to a night in 2010 um, where some boundaries and, and some lines were blurred. And Some boundaries and some lines were blurred, were they? I don't think boundaries and lines were blurred in your story, buddy. Those boundaries and lines of a passed out person in a room are kind of universal, okay? They're kind of deeply understood by everybody in the human race except for monsters, okay? And one thing I didn't mention about this guy's case because it's like buried down deep within the thing, he was charged with two things, okay? with the finger and with the d and there was a bit of a plea deal involved where he said okay I'll admit to the finger but there was no dick so that's why it went, went down to seven years as well I woke up the next morning after a party finding myself accused of <laughs> you woke up after a party finding yourself accused of that that's not the way the story goes the way the story goes from the court documents <laughs> has it saying that uh, she woke up, asked, who did this thing, and you identified yourself. You're like, yeah, yo, that was me over here. I'm the one. That's how it reads in the court document anyway. And uh, nine months of mitigation later, I was ultimately charged with what's called non-consent. Nine months of litigation, okay, non-consent. That doesn't sound very good, buddy. That really doesn't sound very good. But it doesn't really sound like you're owning up to it. It's kind of like, oh, poor me, I did this thing. I, I spent all this time in jail. I did this poor little thing called non-consent. Oh, what, what a goof. And I spent six years in prison because of it. The way he does that eye contact there, and I did six years, guys, six years in prison, feel bad for me. No, you didn't do enough. What's with six years? It should be 600 years. I thought the dream was dead. He thought the dream was dead. Yeah, and it really should have been, okay? That's where the dream should have died. And hey, where's the apology? Where's the owning up for what happened? No, 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 none of that. Oh, lines were blurred, he says. Oh my God, no, boundaries were crossed, he says. I thought that I would never make music ever again. Oh, isn't that great? He gets to do that thing, come out of jail, and he gets to make music again. What an uplifting story. What an absolute hero's journey this guy is on. Um, that's where God stepped in. <laughs> That's where God stepped in. Oh, he's gonna be grabbing God by the cajones. And there was a chapel at the prison I was sent to and I started to go and my parents sent me a Bible and I started to read it. Yeah, 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 that, uh, uh, that's a likely story, buddy. That's very a likely story. Oh my God, my parents sent me a Bible because they realized their son was a friggin' monster and they were doing everything they can. They're like, oh my God, maybe God will save him. And uh, God started to speak to me God started to speak to him. Wow, that's powerful stuff. I'm so glad he could take God's message out past the prison walls, out past the jail gates, back into the public, back into civilian life. Oh my God, what a story. So inspirational. And I started to feel hope again. I didn't know what it would look like, but here I am. Oh, here he is jumping around. <laughs> Praising God on stage with a God ponytail. Look at that ponytail. Oh my God. The glory is yours. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And yeah, God has just been. Like every time he mentions God, he grabs him by the nutsack. Like, what is that? That's the second or third time that he's been doing this. Proving faithful. He's been redeeming me. He's been showing me that as his son, Anything is nobody cares about your spiritual journey, buddy. Nobody cares about how God forgave you for being a monster, okay? That's the whole thing. God forgives all, right? All you gotta do is say sorry, and God will be like, yo, dude, <laughs> no big deal. You're a good Christian. Thank you for owning up to it. That's not how the world works, buddy. It's possible. And as long as I'm glorifying him, giving him the glory, and I'm just seeking after Jesus. He has none of this seems genuine. He's like in his mind palace, like seeking for words to say about how God is making him do this path that he's on. There's nothing but good things in store. And so I want to create this album. I want to make music for him finally, uh, you know, six years later. That dream is not dead. Oh my God, who do you think is funding this? Anybody? Anybody at all? The dream is not dead. Okay, well, we don't need to watch any more of this. It's just like more of this for the rest of it. There's one more minute left of this video. Blah, 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 blah.
And believe me, he does not like apologize or anything like that. He's not telling us how he's actually being a better person, okay? He's putting the guise of God over it because God means you're a better person, right? But I hate to tell you that like 90% of the evil that goes on out there is in the name of God, okay? So fuck you and fuck that. But look at this. Before we go on, because this is going to be about the audacity of this, okay? He tells his story and then he asks for the breakdown. How much do you think he's asking to record a record, okay? Now you could go out there and make this record for yourself if you wanted to, you know what I mean? But no, he's asking for, first off, just like the total breakdown, breaks down to like 11 songs all mastered for $11,110. He's making sure to get those angels numbers in there, you know what I mean? 11, 11, 11, 11. What a absolute wiener, okay? But then he's like, oh no, there's other costs, other costs here, blah, 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 all this. It comes out to 13,685. And then he's like, no, you thought I was done? There are more costs involved. I need $14,100, okay? Now he doesn't mention that in the video. He just goes like, no, I, I listed everything down below and I, I believe it's reasonable. Okay, and then I went down below and it's not reasonable especially to a guy that has done the things that you have done, and especially to a guy that is not actually owning up for it and doing the actual work to be seen as a better human being. You're a goddamn scumbag, a trash bag, an absolute weirdo, a creep, a freak, a delinquent, a degenerate. I could keep on going. So on his YouTube channel over here, he's got one subscriber, five likes on this thing. I'm gonna pop down a fat dislike really quick. 189 views. This guy was signed to Atlantic, okay? Nobody cares about you, nobody knows about you, and this thing is not gonna be a successful project, okay? And I couldn't be happier to report on that. So the way that I predict this is gonna happen, he's not gonna reach his goal. All that money is gonna go back to the people, all right? Which I, which it just has to be his like Christian support group, you know what I mean? There can't be anybody else that's like funding this other than the people in his direct life. I can only imagine that the only people in his life are his support system at the churches because the, the churches kind of have to support these lunatics, these deranged weirdos. And that's why they all end up at church, right? It's because it's the only place that accepts them. But if you accept this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Leave a bunch of pancakes down below. Don't go out and harass him or anything. I don't care about any of that. A huge shout out to the Dan Frampton News Team. One more shout out to the, the live streams that I do. If you want to be a part of the, the Dan Frampton News Team, all you got to do is be a part of the streams and come with something interesting to talk about. And if you put that in the chat, and I go to the, the, the website that you put and it's interesting to talk about, well, god dang, you're part of the Dan Frampton News Team. Welcome aboard. All that being said, until my next video, you can watch another video.